Hi everyone, so in the last video I had made a complete roadmap about how you can crack companies like Infosys, TCS or Accenture. And in that video I had covered mostly the aptitude part. I had made several videos about aptitude, about how you can master aptitude, how you can learn aptitude and eventually clear the aptitude round of all of these companies, right? But what about the coding section? A lot of you guys wanted to know how to clear the coding section of these companies. And the coding section of these companies are pretty unique and depending on which role you want to get into, the expectation from you will be different. So you have to be prepared accordingly for the coding section of these companies. And that's what we're going to talk in today's video. We're going to see how you can crack the coding round of all of these companies as easily as slicing through a piece of cake. So you might be wondering, okay, Ashish, you covered aptitude. You're covering the coding round in this video. What about the actual interview? How about the actual interview? After we clear the coding round, what do we do in that? So I have something very special lined up for that. I have some very amazing people who I have collaborated with who will be sharing their interview experiences on my channel in the next coming days. So they'll be giving you tips on how to clear the interviews. They'll be telling their interview experiences and everything in details. So do subscribe if you haven't already. And now let's get into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide these companies into the roles that they have. And then I'm going to tell you what are the expectations from those roles and how you can clear the coding round with each of those roles. Okay. So we'll be starting with TCS, then we'll go to Accenture and then we'll go to Infosys. Okay. So starting with TCS, the different roles in TCS are TCS Ninja, you have TCS Digital and you have TCS Prime. TCS Prime is relatively new. It was not there during my placements when I was in college. It's relatively a bit new. And the package difference is also quite staggering. In Ninja, you have 3.5 around LPA. You have Digital, you have 7.5 LPA, if I'm not wrong. And Prime, you have 9 to 11 LPA, which is pretty decent comparing, you know, today's market and how the recession and all is going. So how do you clear the coding round of TCS? So there is this test called TCS NQT, which is National Qualifier Test. Now, the first phase of the test is all about aptitude. And you guys are already prepared for aptitude because I've made so many videos. If you haven't already, go watch the video. It will be in the description. It will also appear on the iCard. Go click that video and your aptitude will be sorted. Now, after aptitude, you'll have the coding round. Okay. Now, earlier they used to have three questions in the coding round. They only have two questions right now in the coding round, in the coding challenge. And the coding challenge is something like this. The first question is very easy. It is around easy to medium. The second question is the deciding factor, okay, of where you'll be getting. So the second question is going to be a bit difficult. It is on medium to hard level difficulty. Sometimes it can be a hard question. Sometimes it can be a medium hard. But the first question will always be easy or easy medium. So the second question is the one that you need to focus on. So based on my experience and the multiple people that I have talked with, if you solve both of the questions, you will get a mail for TCS Prime. If you solve one and a half, you'll get a mail for TCS Digital. And if you only manage to solve one or less, you will get a mail for TCS Ninja. But again, it depends. I've also seen some people who only solved one and a half and still got the mail for TCS Prime. So if you were not able to solve both the problems, don't worry about it. But your goal should be to solve both of the problems. Now, how can you do that? So first of all, let's understand that TCS allows multiple programming languages. It allows C++ as well. And this is the language I want you to choose. Unless you're a Java guy, you can go into Java if you are. But if you're not, I highly suggest to go into C++. Why? Because C++ has a very powerful library called STL, which you can use to easily solve hard problems or data structure oriented problem. So to, for the first question, like I said, it will be easy. So most it will come from a topic like array, string, number theory, or a basic data structure like linked list, stack, or queue. Okay. So you need to be good with arrays and strings problem. You need to be good with number theory and maths like LCD, GCD, HCF, these kind of things. You need to be good with basic data structures, which like I said, are linked list, stack, and queue. Okay. If you do these things properly, then 110% first question you'll be able to do because it is usually a simple problem. Coming to the second question, like I said, it's medium to hard level difficulty. So for this, you need some advanced data structures. For this, you need to be good with solving lead code medium problems. Make sure that you're able to solve lead code medium problems within 20 to 25 minutes. And the topics to focus here are graph theory. You need to be good with graph, DFS, BFS. You need to be good with sliding windows. You need to be good with two pointers. You need to be good with a tree. You need to know tree traversals, things like that. 
and in some rare cases they ask dynamic programming as well in few of the interview experiences you'll also get to know in the next few videos they even asked dynamic programming question but i'm not scaring you and dp is difficult but they will only ask standard dp so again for that go through all of the questions on lead code try to go through all of the questions on geeks for geeks and you will be done for more topics list will be in the description you can check out more topics from there okay now coming to the next company which is accenture accenture hires for two roles one is asc then you have advanced asc which is also double asc called which is also called double asc so in asc the package is around 4.5 lpa and the asc advanced asc is around 6.5 lpa now accenture is probably the easiest company in all of these three that i'm mentioning in this video accenture is probably the easiest to crack so Accenture initially again has an aptitude test, but along with aptitude, you'll also have a technical section where you have MCQs from some CS fundamental topics. You have pseudo code questions and you have things like that. So be, be clear with aptitude, be clear with some technical things, be clear with, you know, uh, pseudo code and you'll be able to clear the first round. And if you want to focus more on Accenture's first round about how to clear the first round, then I'll give a few mock tests in the description. You can take a few mock tests, understand the type of problems you'll be getting, and the first round will be easy for you to cover. Now, the second round is the DSA and coding round, okay? So here again, you have two questions, and the number of questions you do, or the number of test cases you pass will eventually decide whether you get selected for AASE or ASC. okay? Again, the goal here is to solve both of these problems because both of them will be easy, okay? Compared to TCS, I'm saying, so the first question will be easy, easy, medium again. And this time they can ask uh, some standard questions as well. So again, be good with all the standard questions like two sum or two questions you see on lead code. Okay. Most probably they'll just take an easy medium question from lead code and give you as it is for the first question. So make sure that you clear all the easy questions on lead code and or all the easy medium questions on lead code. Again, the topics to keep in mind for Accenture are arrays, strings, and some basic algorithms like two pointers, sliding windows, number theory, mathematics. And here you'll not be expected to solve a lot of hard problems. So it might come to you that, so it might be possible that you come across DP, but uh, I haven't seen it happen so far. So you can prepare for easy medium problems on lead code that should be good enough for you to clear both the questions. But just in case you can do a few hard problems as well, Again, a list of topics for you will be in the description. You can check it out from there. And the time allotted for you will be 45 minutes. So you have to solve both of the questions within 45 minutes, which is not difficult to do. Both of the questions will be at max medium hard. You'll not find any hard question at all. It has never been happened so far. And even if it happens, then most of the people will not be able to solve. So try to solve both of the problems. You'll be able to do that with ease. Trust me. If your preparation is strong, both of the problems for you will be easy. You'll be able to solve it within the 45 minute time frame. Now, apart from this, one unique thing about Accenture is that they have a, a communication test as well, where what you'll be given is you'll be given some audio. You can listen to that audio and then you have to repeat back. You have to basically tell them what you heard. It's basically a test for them to know whether you're good with communicating in English or not. It's nothing more than that. So be good with your vocabulary for that. Be good with basic English speaking for that. And the communication test will be like easy for you. Coding test is the one to focus on. Like I said, so if you do all the easy medium problems on lead code, pretty much it'll be easy for you. All of the standard easy medium problems, basically it'll be easy for you. Now the next company that we have is Infosys. Infosys has two modes of hiring. One you have NVDQ, the exam you can give, and one you have hack with NC, which is like a open coding test for all students. So let's talk about NVDQ and how you can clear the NVDQ. So Infosys has three different profiles. You have systems engineer, you have a power programmer, and then you have a specialist engineer, if I'm not wrong. And for NVDQ, it is again a bit different. And let me tell you, Infosys is a bit hard to clear. I've talked about that in my previous videos as well. But don't worry, I'll be giving you some special resources for clearing the Infosys coding round in the description, free resources that you can use for your Infosys test. Okay, so the first round in Infosys goes like this. It's a certification round. So you have questions on Java and Python. If you're good with object-oriented programming, if you know the basic syntax and semantics, you'll be good. After that, you have a few questions on DBMS. So again, you need to learn DBMS. You need to be good with SQL. After that, after you clear the first round, then you have the advantage round. Now, advantage round is the coding round in Infosys, and it is a little bit difficult. So you have three questions, three hours. 
obviously if they're expecting you to solve three questions in three hours which is a huge time frame then the questions are going to be a little bit difficult so the questions are going to be medium to hard level difficulty here you have to focus on difficult topics like graph dynamic programming and tree you can expect 110 percent one question at least from one of the harder topics like this recursion or even you know uh, things like like this recursion and things like you know some complex algorithms so these are the tough algorithms you need to focus on apart from that if you're good with all of the basic algorithms if you're good with all of the basic data structures again like your link list your stack your queue your doubly queue your priority queue your doubly link list if you're good with all of that then you'll be able to solve one problem because one problem is based on basic data structures after that one problem will be based on a little bit complex things using arrays or strings so you might get a complex mathematical problem on array you might get a complex problem using string itself so again for that you need to practice a lot on lead code and you need to practice a lot on geeks for geeks so if you practice problems on lead code if you're able to solve medium problem and if you're able to solve some hard problems from some hard topics then it'll be easy for you to clear the infosys round but again because the round is tough i want you to focus on at least solving minimum two and maximum obviously you can aim for solving all three of that you can do that even though it's difficult so try to solve minimum two in the enforces coding round and maximum try to solve all three if it's a bit easier you can you'll be able to solve all three okay and for enforces there's a lot of free resources because the enforces exam is so difficult i have compiled some free resources i'll be giving them in the description from there you can learn all the topics which are important and you'll be able to cover the enforces coding round easily okay again depending on how many questions you do you'll be getting mail for one of the profiles okay the salaries are also a little bit different for each role they keep revising it so the exact amount you can again find in the description now one more thing to note here is that Infosys only allows java or python you cannot use c++ here so in java and python the choice should be java according to me learn java if you're going for Infosys coding round it is 100% going to help you okay now for all of these companies like i told you you'll be getting either two questions or three questions and you have to solve pretty much all of them if you want to get the best role with the best package right so instead of focusing on one company at a time i suggest you to improve your problem solving skills how can you do that first you need to learn the programming language very very well you can choose c plus plus or you can choose java although you need java for infosys so if you're going for infosys again learn java be good with the syntax of the language be good with the semantics of the language be good with the library of the language you have scl and c plus plus you have collections in java be good with that that will help you in solving dsa a lot afterwards you need to jump on lead code okay in lead code you can solve a lot of problems i suggest to you is go sheet by sheet so you can take striver's coding sheet he has an amazing sheet if you have time i highly suggest you to complete striver's sheet for uh, dsa You'll be getting a lot of good questions you'll be able to solve all of them then give contest on lead code while giving on contest on lead code you'll be able to have a similar setting to the coding round of these companies okay you'll have a huge competition you'll have problems and you'll have a time frame within which you have to solve problems so giving contest will certainly give you an edge over the other candidates if you give contest in websites like lead code gfg or even some computer programming websites okay so there is no shortcut you have to practice you have to give contest but there are certain topics that you can focus on to have a better chance of succeeding and all of that all of the resources you'll be able to find in the description box okay so that's pretty much it about the coding round if you have any doubt feel free to leave it in the comment i'll clarify it for you right away and do watch out and subscribe because in the next few videos i'll have some amazing people come on my channel and share their interview experience and their journeys so that's all thank you